So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hands to wisdom. Praise the Lord. At this time, Sister Brown is going to sing this song as we receive the body of the young.
be seated for a moment. Thank you very much, Sister Brown. We will live in the light because Jesus is the light. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me say good afternoon again to everybody. It is a pleasure and a privilege for us to be here this evening. As we pay our last respect to Mr. Delroy Cyrus, a son of the soil, brother, father, an uncle, and a friend to all, who left us a short time ago. We thank Almighty God for His goodness. The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And to die is gain. Hallelujah. I want to take this opportunity today to welcome each and every one of you to this funeral service for Mr. Deroy Cyrus. I pray that today each and every one of us will look into ourselves and realize that death is certain. Because the Bible says it is a point when the man wants to die, but after this comes a judgment. So I want to challenge you to listen carefully to the songs and to the word of God as we give God thanks and praise for the life and time of our dear brother, dear Lord Silas. So once again, I welcome each and every one of you to this funeral service. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to invite you to stand once more. Let us all stand. And we're going to look to God in the word of prayer. Let us look heavenwards at this morning. Our Father, an almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is within it. For your word says, the word is the Lord and the food is there. Father, you are the great I am that I am. You are our provider. You are our strength and our song. And you have become our salvation. We thank you, O oh God, for this day. For this is your day that thou has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad. We thank you, O God, for your grace and your mercy that have brought us through. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness towards us. Even when we are unfaithful to you, you still remain faithful to us, O God. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. We thank you, O oh God, most of all for your son Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross many years ago. He died. Live up his life so that we can live, so that we can be a people. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins. He died so that we can go to heaven. And so Lord, we give you all the praise and all the honor and the glory today. Father, today we live before you, the members of the bereaved the family, Sister Brown, Brother Brown, and others. We live them before you, O God. Even 
even in this dark moment of their lives. Father, it has pleased you to call unto yourself, or to the dead Roy Cyrus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for giving him to us, dear Father, and for the life that you would have lived on this earth. Lord God, your word says in you we live. We move and we have our being. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. Whether we live or die, we do it as unto you, O oh God. And so today we thank you, Father. Lord, may you strengthen them at this moment. May you give them courage. Father, comfort them in this time of bereavement. Lord, for you are the God of all comfort and all grace. Father, Lord God Almighty, so long they at this time there, Father. Lord God, may you give them the strength to face, O oh God, this challenge before them. Father, Almighty God, have your way in their lives. Lord God, for those who are sobbing, I ask, O God, that your words will come to the confidence of sin, that they will turn their lives over to you before it is too late. Father, take your control now. Bless this service, O God, and let it run to your soul. I pray for each and every one present here this afternoon. I pray, O God, that they too will receive a blessing from you. Father, for the message is not for their Lord, but for each and every one of us. Father, have you made this service? Take your control. Bless us all as we give you thanks. In no other name, but in the mighty and blessed and holy and conquering and sweet and majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Keep standing and we're going to sing a song together. It's right on the song feed there, on the program, the fourth song. In your hands, Lord, we place today, tomorrow. In your hands, Lord, we surrender all. In your hands, we commit our joys, our sorrows. In your hands, we surrender all. Praise the Lord. Let us surrender our all to Almighty God. Hallelujah. As the Lord would have done before he passed from his life. You can praise for the future in your hands.
give your hands, we place everything, Lord. Take care, O oh God, great name of the Lord. Please have your seats at this time. Now we will have the first scripture reading, and this will be done by Sister Maxine Cyrus, the sister of their Lord Cyrus.
for the process. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this time, we will have the second scripture reading, and this will be done by a cousin of the Lord Cyrus, none other than Sister Paulina Young.
that is to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and cross and Savior in this life before it is too late. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Bobby, and young for that wonderful song. At this time, I'm going to invite our worship team to lead us in some wonderful courses. The sisters from the San Diego Gospel Council.
faithful to me. Even though I was unfaithful to him, he still remained faithful to me. He's my field, he's my banner, he's my buckler, he's my strength, he's my song, and he has become my salvation. What a God we saw. He is everything to me. I thank God today for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I am standing today because of his goodness. Hallelujah. Praise be to his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sandy, because of chapter sisters. And now we will have Sister Maxine Cyrus to pay tribute. The sister of our brother Delro. Praise the Lord. Things. 
um, when I left the military, sorry, when I left this, this home and go to the military, and we always, we always keep in contact every, every so often. Um, and I can remember when he felt sick, when his brother Rashida called and said, the man is sick, and I said, what? Really? So when I said to him, like, oh, we haven't even seen him. So, went to his bed, I think it's two weeks before he died, we went there, and when I saw the state of my brother, I, I couldn't hold up. It was, it was so emotional. You know? But um, while we went there, and, um, Rashido, um, he asked his pastor to come along with him. He said, um, I'm going to bring my pastor with me. Because I think the, the state that they is in is, in, is not very really a good state. So the pastor came along and we went inside the room. And when he saw us, he had there was a smile on his face, which was beautiful. And um, we were there. Um, there was a situation where he kind of speak, and we have to use like um, sign language. And he said to us, "Pain, pain. It's been a lot of pain, Master." And I remember Rashida said to him, "He said, Munka sent to you a, a Bible verse. And he read the Bible verse and he start crying." And from that moment, um, the pastor said to him, look, I'm going to leave you in prayer. And from this day, you're going to tell me, you're going to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I can remember the pastor was, was praying to him, praying. And he was crying, and he was crying. At the end of the, the, the praying, he said to the pastor, shake his head, so you you accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And he said, yes. From then on, I know, God was going to say, I'm going to go God. And, yeah, seriously, and... We were there and we were taking him stay for like two, three hours. And he said to us, you know what? We say, you're good? He said, yes, I'm good. I'm going to sleep. And he just said goodbye to us. And that was the last time I saw him. And I remember, because from then on, I used to keep in contact, make sure everything is all right. And I lost my sister this Sunday, um, which I buried last week. And the Monday, Rashida called me and said, Man is gone. I was like, wow. Talking, talking two days. That's not good, anyway. And yeah, but I just want to say, um, sometime in life, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen, but you always have to keep close to each other, family and friends. All right. But I know Delroy is in a better place at the moment. I know he's with God. You know what I mean. So to my brother, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Until we meet again.
one? Delhi. I would say, Delhi, I just know you by your face. But all the good things that said about you, you know, I am not acquainted. But I want to say something on the behalf of my dear, very best friend, Sister Monica Brown. When I used to be president of the Sisters of the Sunday Bay Gospel Chapel, I can say we were pals. If Sister Brown said Barry, if Sister Brown said Kim, sorry, if she said Kim, Sister Hoy can say Barry. So I can tell you much about my dear Sister Brown. Jenny, she talks so much about you. She will always say, Christmas comes, I am going to get my barrel. And Sister Hoy, you gonna get your goodies. <laughs> and so I am so glad for my goodies because I know I used to get my hand full. You can't know. Thank you. 
I, I, there's a couple of guys there who I know you're going to take off some bricks from. Sit the power. So we sit around and stop by the power around. He didn't, he didn't like bouncer. So if you bounce at him, you get him back. But don't bounce and you kill the story. <laughs> then he went on to Nottingham Secondary School, where he also mastered the trade in battle. He never leave out his battle. Then he makes the under 19 team for St. Vincent and the Vernon. And I, I believe if I have an under 9 and under 10 right up to whatever it is, they're always going to make it. Because we're that class of a batsman and the wicket keeper for St. Vincent and the Vernons. You see, I don't like to read eulogy. I talk about people. <laughs> <laughs> there I was once. After school, then he went to the other tree. And I did not get a chance with a guy named Ford from Sandy. They went to that way to walk. And then he fought that way to walk. But then he was my camp. So then he made a, made a sweet soup. <laughs> to Ford. But Ford had to forgive him. Because as I said before, so you can't blame him. That's a problem. Anyhow, he went down and from there on he fly straight and then he moved on from there. And he went to sell liquor and comes up. He went up and saw liquor store to sell And he walked there and he migrated to England. And because of cricket, he migrated to England. And he was playing for a team in Harry Common called Boston. Guess what? I don't know if you know that area, but he was playing for that team. Matter of fact, I went on several occasions with him. The party. And they have there. Whatever they have there. In 2004, we come and pick me up and we go up to Test Court and we have a good fun. Then we have also that Steve Van Clem. Played Steve Van Clem in Vincent before he went to England. He went to England. He played cricket in England and he also played. Matter of fact, one time Jerome Lavan, when he came back from England, he's my major cousin, and then he came to the same band together. So he was an all rounder. Matter of fact, that is one of those persons who I personally believe have so much in him that he himself did not know he produced. So they get other people to take it out of us. But he was a well rounded gentleman. He also was a dancer. The Carlos said to me, with the other cousin, he said, if you think you love dancing, ask Delhi. He said, Delhi, you have been drunk. Then you go to dance. And again, that comes from Beckham Cyrus, a cousin. So he was that type of person. He lives and walks in England. And I said before, he was an electrician. And when he was walking in England, he was in electronics because he was working with El Park and he was both making computer chips. So he was a well, well rounded gentleman. It's a pity that time has come so quick, too soon, as well. Because he has so much in him half to accept and he could not dock the bombs of death. I tried to duck by a little duck, say to me, from him that you father. Because he used to score a little bar or something. <laughs> but he was a well-rounded gentleman, well-managed, and every single person in our every single person in our was loved there. He was loved by everyone. When he goes to him and he comes back, and we sit on the seat, and he comes to the seat, and he gives us some little jokes. He gives us some stories sometimes, and I saw him about a truth. <laughs> Your story would make a laugh, but he was very, very good and a well rounded gentleman. We are going to take him and we have to say thanks to God for the short time he lent him to us. May his soul rest in peace. <laughs> Before we do, let us all stand.
We've been sitting for a long time. We're going to sing a song together. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all.
Jesus' name. And it's good to be here. Now, funeral is not some, something I really enjoy. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I am one who can uh, test to the fact of life when it comes to, to death. Just recently, one of my brothers would have gone. But this afternoon, as you would hold, Delroy, which I know for a fact, even before he go to England, would have accepted Jesus as his personal Savior. He got baptized, and like many, he would have strayed from God. Now there is a saying that in the midst of life, you are in debt. See, the fact remains that nobody knows when death will take you. Because if we know when death will come, we will live our lives differently. Am I right? We will make sure that we live it up to a good standard. That's why in this time, in this moment, in this life, we have to prepare for that. And our only preparation for that is knowing Jesus as Savior. Now I realized just recently that a lot of folks don't like to hear the term hell. They just don't like to hear that word at all. But my duty as a child of God and as a minister of the gospel is to warn you about hell. Because hell is real. Whether you like it or not, it's a real place. The Bible talks about the hell is not prepared for man. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. Somebody said to me just recently, when Pastor, when God is too loving to send people to hell. I said, you're right. You are correct. Because God don't send anybody to hell. Man choose to go to hell. Because God would have made a way so that man can escape. But man is still rejecting the way that God would have prepared. Man still reject Jesus. Today briefly, I want to share with us from the book of Luke. It's a familiar story that you know, Luke chapter 18. Luke 16 rather, from verse 19. It's a story about two individuals. And this story, as I said, starts from 19 and it goes to verse 21. So I would encourage you to read that when you get some time, right? But I'm going to just jump into the story. Now the story is one which may be familiar to, to many. You heard it at a number of funerals before. It's about two very different men who in their lives live in close proximity. They were neighbors, close by. Now the first man name was Lazarus. And the other one name, well the Bible did not give him a name. How the Bible called him a rich man? And the Bible talks about how he was, he would clothe himself in fine linen and a chest of knives. And the poor man, the beggar, would every single day of his life go close by to him just to ask for the crumbs that fell from his table. The Bible declares that the only companion that the beggar had in that moment of his life was the dog. The Bible said that the dog came and licked his souls. So there is a contrast between these two fellows. Verse 19 and 21. They both live their lives. But one lived his life luxuriously, living just enough eating, have no time 
for the poor. What? A man can only do as much as he can do, but not as long as he can. Because there comes a time, there's, there comes a quarter of time. Somebody wrote earlier on in, in, in Hebrews 9.27, where the Bible says that it is appointed unto man, wants to die, but after death comes the judgment. So my little topic for you today is death the doorway to eternity. If I should ask you the question even in this moment, if you should die now, where would you spend your eternity? And I want to let you know right now, in this very moment, that life on earth is just a temporary assignment. Your assignment will come to an end. Delhi, whose body is lying before us today, which he's not here, he can hear one thing that they say. His assignment came to an end. There is nothing else left for him to do. But you and I, you and I, we are left behind. So they, they both live their lives. But look at something again. In verse 22, both of them died. And I want you to look, look at something here with me right this evening. Both of them died. The Bible said that if they had died, but he was taken, he was transported by angels into Abraham's bosom. Now Abraham's bosom is a place of comfort, a place of contentment, a place of total rest. So the Bible also says that the, the rich man who has all his wealth, he also died. Now I want to let you know, nothing is wrong with riches. Absolutely nothing is wrong with riches. But you see, if you, if you, if you place your riches above God, you're in for trouble. God should be top priority in everyone's life. Should be number one. So the, 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 the rich man who have, he probably told boy, they can't catch me because I have money, you know, so, so I could buy my way out. Hmm. But you see, you cannot buy your way out of that. Because when death shows up, there is nothing else you can do. The only person who can save you and live from death is God. I've known of people who get to the point, to the, some people would say it like this, they get to death door. And they begin to restore their life. And from the time they get back into good health, instead of recognizing the fact that God would have spared their lives yet another time, they go right back into their mess. No time for God. Now this message is not for them, it's for you and me. One of these days you and I are going to die. Whether you like it or not, death is going to come for you. I can be standing here with you and from the time I step out here, that the same preacher who was preaching, he died. You're going to, that's why you're going to act surprised. But then can knock on our door at any moment. So the, the Bible says that this rich man, when he died, guess where he ended up? He ended up in hell being in torment. That's not my word, that's the word of God. So what's the contrast between the two men? In life, what the rich man had? He had everything that he wanted, all you need for life. The poor beggar didn't have anything. All he needed at that moment was to just eat the crumbs that fell from his table. But now in that, there's a difference in that. The, 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 the beggar now, he was in a more satisfying place where he was comforted by angels. But now the rich man who had all his wealth, here he was in hell, crying out. Now I guess he even in his lifetime, he didn't even know that Abraham exists. But now he died and he looked over and he saw the beggar in Abraham's bosom comforted. Now he began to cry out, Father Abraham. Probably he didn't even call Abraham father before. But here he cried out, Father Abraham, send Lazarus 
that he may dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this thing. Come on, you got to understand that hell is real. And when you get there, you're going to remember the preachings that you heard in your lifetime. You're going to remember them. But guess what? Too late. Too late. Shall be a crash. God has already made a way for man to escape. I heard Jesus said in John, John 14, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. It says, no man cometh to the Father except through me. Over my lifetime, I hear people quote to, to folks who, who, who surrender their heart to God and because they were living some reckless life, they start, if you are going to heaven, I'm going to. Your only guarantee and only passport to heaven is you knowing Jesus as your personal sin. Amen. There is no other hope that you're going to get to heaven. Only through Jesus. And sometimes I go and ask somebody if there's a shortcut. Because some, some people think that there are some people who don't deserve to go to heaven. So if you go in a car, reach before you. So I don't think there's a shortcut somewhere. But I only know that Jesus is the only way yes. to heaven. Yes. The other thing is, is eternity. Where will you spend it? Now, if you want to, if you understand something, for you to, you got to know in this life where you're going. Hello? There is two distinct places that is prepared. You have heaven and you have hell. So you got to choose for yourself. And the decision that you make in this life will determine where you want to spend your eternity. Now if you refuse the Son of God, then you choose to walk right into hell. The question was asked, what must man do to go to hell? Is there anything that a man can do to go to hell? No. You don't have to do anything to go to hell. You just remain outside of Jesus and you can't stay. But for you to get to heaven, you can accept Jesus as your Lord and as your personal Savior. So, it's interesting you know, that the same people that you reject sometimes in life is the same people that are reach out to you. You see how important it is to always be good to one another? Because you don't know the moment when you will need a helping hand from somebody. But sorry for the rich man that his time of needing some help was too late. Because I heard the Bible says that Abraham said to him, Son, in your lifetime you have all that you need. And now Lazarus is comforted and you are in torment. And guess what? Where you are over on that side and where, he, where Lazarus is, he can't come where you are. And you can't even come over here because guess what? There is a great gulf fix. There is a separation. Even if Lazarus wanted to go, he can't. So you got to know now. Now is the accepted time, the Bible says. No, not next week. Because you don't know about next week. Today is the day of salvation. As I wrap up this evening, there is five things I want to leave in your mind as you go. First of all, eternity is where lesson or uh, is where all the wrongs or injustice are made right in eternity. Now, when you stand before God, hello, when you stand before God, He's not going to ask you how your neighbor lived. Hello? He's not going to ask you how your brothers and your sisters in church were living. He's gonna, the question is gonna be targeting you. What have you done with my son? What have you done with the life that you were supposed to be living for me? Are you going to stay and look God in his place and say, Well, God, some of these pastors are little like them. 
Uh, God, I didn't like how some people were just in going to church. Hello? Then excuse the last time. Are you going to tell God, well, God, you know, then I don't stop. I didn't have any clothes. Oh, I didn't have any shoes. You could imagine some, some weird excuse that people use because they don't want to serve God. But the same set of people who tell you they don't have any clothes, let them hear some kind of jump eating something. They're going to find clothes to reach to the black horse. They're going to find clothes to get into the dance hall. And they will spend money to buy those kind of clothes. Listen. But for them to dress so somebody can say, Oh, you look beautiful, you're going to church. Praise God. I don't want to hear that. That's what they do. I want to hear, that, you don't want to hear when you go out there, Oh, you look fat. <laughs> well, if you look fat in life, I don't know what you end up in a hot place too. Yeah. Hmm? So the force, that is where in eternity, the only wrongs or injustice will be made right. Secondly, our eternal, eternal destiny is not what most people expect. Because eternity will come as a shock and a surprise to many who think that they are going to heaven and find themselves end up in heaven. I heard the Bible says that people will come before even some people who are standing behind the pulpit singing in the choir they're going to stand before God and say look God I was singing God I preach in your name God I cast out demons in your name uh -huh. demons run from me when I showed up but guess what at the end of your conversation God is still going to tell you I don't know you that is going to be a hard one so you're up in church all your life and think that all is well but when you get to the tone and you stand before God, you're going to hear the part from me. I don't know you. Do you want to hear those kind of words? No. You see, I started here today. I, I, I have normally said to people, I want to hear these words. Come ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Those are the words I want to hear. I don't want to hear the part. You think it's going to be an easy thing? You don't enjoy or experience life a hell of a lot and then you still end up in hell. Somebody say if you end up there, you better you end up born. The third thing I want to leave with you. Our eternal destiny is not determined by those things by which our society measures. Success and significance by human estimates. It would have been Lazarus, the poor, and the miserable man who would have suffered eternal. Oh, who used to go to Sunday school back in the days, isn't it? They used to sing this song. If salvation was a thing, that money could have buy. The rich could have buy, and the poor would have died. But thank God today that salvation is offered to every man free. You don't have to pay a cent for it because guess what? The Son of God have already paid the price for it on Calvary when he died. The only thing that you have to do is to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior and salvation is yours. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but they shall have everlasting life. God did a glory. Great things he had done at some thing. So love in the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and he opened the life gates that all, oh, not some, but all may go in. Would you take the chance today to get in? Don't wait until the door is closed. Remember back in the days when we had the fun? And Noah preached? The people laughed at Noah? Guess what? The Bible says, as it was in Noah's day, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. For the Bible says, the days before the flood, the people were eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage. They were having a nice time. Now, are we living in that time now? Yes. Men rather pleasures than God. Look at what, look, if you want to 
no Lutheran. Look at our churches today. Even people who used to be out of the church where they are now. Some of them are back in the world. Hmm? You may say, Pastor, how do you know that? I'm alive. So I'm seeing things. Let's go. Yes. People, people love measures. Now watch this today. If today, I'm just used to it. If this was a plan, as some kind of part, where did you have? No room is very tight here. And outside, it's going to be moved forward. Because guess what? This is a, a funeral service. And little people say, oh, that's boring. <laughs> but guess what? Remember, your time is not too far. <clears throat> because any one of us can part this life anytime. Number four, our eternal destiny is sealed by the decision that we make in life and cannot be reversed after death. So the decision that you make today will determine your eternal destiny. So if you reject Jesus, then heaven is going to be your portion. But if you accept Jesus, heaven is going to be yours. It is there for the team. I brought it out the man of God said in the Old Testament. He said, as he called the people of Israel together, he said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. So the door is open right there. But he said, he beat his chef and he said, but as for me and my also, we will serve the Lord. My friend, it doesn't matter how people may look at you. When you come to know Jesus, they will give you some time, they will give you years, they will give you months. But guess what? When you know what you came for, you're going to stay. You see me standing up there? When I now give my heart to God in 1991, some folks who I used to hang out with, they say, oh, we give him two months. I'll just see how it will go. I'll just see how it will go. Two months. Then they realize, no, what? Two months, he's doing well. One year passed, they said, let me give him two now. Because he seemed to hold his gum in that one year. So let me give him two. I would stand here this evening and boldly say, I am serving God now for 22 years. Amen. And have no regret doing that. Amen. I'm excited about God because I know who the God that I am serving. When I stand up and talk to people about God, I don't fake it. I mean everything I say about God because I know God loves me. Yes. So if God would have changed a person like me, a person like Delhi, He can change you too. Yes. And don't think that you are forgive me for my sins. And I want Jesus in my life because He died for me. So I'm ready to live the rest of my life for Him. Amen. Finally, no, the decision involves the acknowledgement and repentance of our sins and trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ who died praise God that he died who was buried thank God that they buried him but I shout hallelujah to the because he didn't stay in the grave because the Bible said he was risen so right this very moment he's seated at the right hand of God making intercession and that's beautiful because I know that one day, when my life on earth is done, I'm going to spend eternity with my Father in heaven. Jesus Christ who died for my sin. Amen. So today, my friend, you're in this service, and you never know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your personal Savior. I entreat you to give him a chance in your life. And I could tell you, you will never regret it. The only regret that you might have, because when you start to experience the sweetness of God, you're going to say you sorry you didn't know before. I could tell you. So make today a day that you give your heart to God. Brother Brown, Sister Brown, and the rest of the family, you are not alone. The Bible says as I close with this, I read this from the family this evening. He said that we do we like the rest of men who doesn't have any hope. Your hope is in God. My hope is in God. Brother Delhi's hope is in God. Somebody rightly said, he's not here with us.
God will have graciously taken. And I want you, brother, from my sister, from, to stand like Job and say, The Lord giveth, and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. The last song I made in the program, then, when I call the, the family, if you could stand around the coffin, please. The family of Delhi, can you come? Whether you are cousin, who are close, wherever you may come. Because everybody needs Jesus in this moment. You need God to just help you out. So come on, all the members of the family, can you just stand around the, the coffin, then? I'm going to invite the church to stand with Everybody to stand So the audience, your duty is simple and easy. I want you to send your hand, uh, your right hand, stretch your right hand towards the rest of the family, the audience, that your job, right? You're going to stand and send your hand towards the audience while we pray for the family. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thank you, dear God, for who you are, the great God, the mighty fortress, the mighty deliverer, the rock that the righteous run into, and they are saved. Amen. Father, your word also declares that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Father, the psalmist say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Father, today we bring the family of the Cyrus and the Brown family standing before you this very moment. God, you know each heart, you see each heart. God, we pray right now that you will comfort everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you will surround the family as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Father God, I pray that you will give them the peace of God that surpasses knowledge. Father, I pray God that your peace will reign in their hearts and in their lives even now. Father, for those who are physically weak even in this moment, I pray for physical strength right now. Touch each from the crown of the head to the very soul of the feet. Father, we pray that you will bring an ease to them today. Remind them that Delhi is in the arms of Jesus. And keep them from danger, keep them united. Because God has said that God has said that united we stand. And divided we will fall. We are not praying that this family will fall, but we are praying that they unite and stand together in the name of Jesus. Just have your beloved Lord, Father. And surround them with prayer as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you. At this time, we're going to sing the frozen hymn. When peace like a river attend that night. When peace like
Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Pastor. We want to thank the Lord for his goodness on our lives. We want to thank him for his faithfulness and for his love towards us. God is great. He is good all the time. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask the band to play me a song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, 
We know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? But Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our beloved and faithful brother, Delroy Cyrus. Many blessed and hallowed memories come to us in these moments, which we shall always cherish. His faithfulness, his friendliness, and consecrated life will continue their radiance and testimony in our lives and our church and also our community in the name of Jesus. At this time, let us bow our hearts in a word of prayer. Our blessed God and Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, creator of heaven and earth and all that is within it, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness on our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness towards us. Even when we are unfaithful, Lord, you still remain faithful to us. And we say thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings on our lives. Thank you, Father, for life. Lord, most of all, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, your son, who died on Calvary's cross many years ago. He died to set us all, to save us all. Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, that one of these days, death will be destroyed. Blessed Father, at this time we lift before you the members of the bereaved family. We ask you, O oh God, to strengthen them, to give them courage in this dark moment, Father. Lord God, you are the God of all grace and all comfort. Have your way in their lives. Father, we ask you to give them the victory over circumstances, over trials, over sin, O oh God. Keep them safe, Father. Bless us all today, Father. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' holy and precious name, I ask with thanksgiving and all God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. All right, let's sing the song in the sweet by and by.
children, loved ones, we gather here to commit to this resting place, the body of our beloved brother, Delroy Deli Cyrus, whose spirit is already with the Lord. While this spot of ground will hold the form of one whose memory we shall always treasure. We look not here in sorrow as those who have no hope. We believe that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and to die is gain. We therefore commit his body to the ground, art to art, and dust to dust. In the renewed and fresh hope of the soon coming of Jesus Christ, at whose appearing the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> Hear the comforting words of the scripture. The Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Praise the Lord. Let us sing the song together. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus.
upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Know the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, walking in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and forever. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. On behalf of Sister Brown and the members of the family, I just want to say thank you for your kindness and for your support that you have shown this afternoon. May God continue to bless everybody here and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
very best. Call him. Call him out. Do what? Do what? Do Ibu Isabel, hai.